The fluid surrounding the cells in the body must maintain a specific concentration of electrolytes for the cells to function properly. Let's look more closely at how electrolyte homeostasis is maintained in the body. Remember that if there is less protein in the plasma, less water would move into the plasma. Because protein synthesis is decreased, plasma colloid osmotic pressure decreases. While fluid moves out of the plasma into the interstitial compartment, less fluid moves into the plasma from the interstitial compartment, resulting in fluid accumulation in the interstitial compartment. What do you think will happen to the blood pressure? Remember that when blood volume decreases, blood pressure decreases as well. Generalized edema is significant because blood volume can drop dramatically along with blood pressure. In addition, increased fluid volume in the interstitial compartment impinges on the capillaries, restricting blood flow. Edema can also occur as a result of increased hydrostatic pressure. For example, the increased blood pressure associated with hypertension increases the hydrostatic pressure in the capillaries. This increased pressure forces more fluid into the interstitial compartment. Local edema can occur as a result of injury or inflammation, such as the swelling that occurs with a sprained ankle. In this case, capillaries become more permeable in the area of injury and proteins move more freely into the interstitial compartment. What do you think happens to fluid movement now? Click the fluid compartment that water will move into. If capillary permeability increases, what will happen to the protein in the plasma? If capillary permeability increases, what will happen to the protein in the plasma? The when the localized inflammation ends, fluid and proteins move through the lymph back to the plasma and the capillary bed returns to normal. Click the lymph vessel to see an example of edema that occurs as a result of lymphatic obstruction. Obstruction of the lymphatic capillaries, which can occur with surgical removal of lymph nodes, hinders the return of interstitial fluid to the venous capillary. The interstitial fluid is trapped in the interstitial compartment. This type of edema is significant because the increased interstitial fluid volume impinges on capillaries and hinders blood flow. The normal concentration range of sodium in the plasma is 136 to 145 milliequivalents per liter, making sodium the ion with the most significant osmotic effect in the extracellular fluid. Now let's consider what will happen if the sodium concentration of the plasma increases, as in hypernatremia. Move the needle on the sodium concentration meter to hypernatremia. Now move the needle on the sodium concentration meter to hyponatremia. What effect would this decrease in sodium concentration have on the cells that are bathed by the interstitial fluid? Yes, the water moves into the cell and the cell expands slightly.
Now let's consider what will happen if the sodium concentration of the plasma increases as in hypernatremia. What effect would this increase in sodium concentration have on the cells that are bathed by the interstitial fluid? Yes, the high concentration of sodium in the extracellular fluid exerts osmotic pressure and helps determine the fluid levels in the intracellular space. Now move in addition to playing a pivotal role in nerve impulse conduction and muscle contraction as the major extracellular positive ion, sodium is the primary regulator of water movement in the body because water follows sodium by osmosis. If sodium levels in the plasma change, those changes determine fluid levels in the other compartments. You have learned that the normal plasma sodium level is 136 to 145 milliequivalents per liter. Hypernatremia occurs when the plasma sodium level is greater than 145 milliequivalents per liter. You have seen what happens to cells when the sodium concentration rises too high. Move the sodium concentration meter needle to hypernatremia to see the effect of this condition. Let's use the marathon runner to see the effect of hypernatremia on the body. The plasma sodium concentration may increase for two reasons. Too much water is lost from the blood without a corresponding loss of sodium, or too much sodium is added to the blood without adding more water. Which of these reasons would most likely cause hypernatremia in the marathon runner? Remember that more water than sodium is lost during sweating. Although the runner would lose sodium, he would lose far more water from sweating. Plasma sodium concentration rises, resulting in hypernatremia. Notice that the runner appears to be confused and disoriented. Symptoms of hypernatremia include nonspecific signs of central nervous system dysfunction, such as confusion and lethargy, and in severe cases, seizures and death. What do you think causes these symptoms? Because the osmolarity of the extracellular fluid is higher than that of the intracellular fluid, water will be drawn out of cells, including neurons, to balance the concentration. From your knowledge of water homeostasis, see if you can determine what symptoms the runner will exhibit. What will happen to thirst? The high plasma sodium will trigger the thirst mechanism, prompting the runner to drink more. What will happen to urine output? When plasma osmolarity increases, antidiuretic hormone is released, resulting in reabsorption of water and decreased urine output. Remember that water movement is greatly influenced by sodium. Many of the symptoms our runner would experience are also a result of dehydration. One of the functions of the kidney is to fine-tune the concentration of sodium in the plasma. Sodium is filtered at the glomerulus. The higher the glomerular filtration rate, the more sodium is filtered out of the plasma. Normally, 85 to 90 percent of that sodium is reabsorbed into the plasma at the proximal convoluted tubule and loop of Henle. In the absence of aldosterone, the remaining sodium will remain in the filtrate and end up in the urine. In the presence of aldosterone, 
the remaining sodium will get reabsorbed at the late distal convoluted tubule and collecting duct. For more information on aldosterone, click here. Will water follow the sodium reabsorption if antidiuretic hormone is present? Remember, ADH allows water to move from the filtrate into the paratubular capillaries at the late distal convoluted tubule and the collecting duct. If antidiuretic hormone is present, water will follow the sodium from the filtrate to the plasma. What effect would water reabsorption have on blood pressure? Blood pressure will increase. If aldosterone is not present, drag the sodium ion to its proper location. Aldosterone also has an effect on potassium. Potassium is filtered at the glomerulus. About 90% of potassium is reabsorbed in the PCT and loop of Henle. If the plasma level of potassium is high, aldosterone is secreted from the adrenal gland. Drag the potassium ion to where it will go in the presence of aldosterone. Remember that aldosterone causes potassium secretion. In the presence of aldosterone, excess extracellular potassium is secreted into the filtrate from the plasma within the late distal convoluted tubule and collecting duct, and even more potassium ends up in the urine. By promoting urine formation, some diuretics will cause a potassium deficiency. Drag the potassium ion to where it will go if a person is deficient.